<laughs> you know what it is how does it feel actually to be like you know a traveling entertainer and a person that uses your like medium in the East Kosa yeah. to like you know communicate to the rest of the universe using music yeah yeah thanks for having me first of all so I think it's my first time here is it on, on Cape Town TV so thank you that's what's up uh, yeah I'm happy you know I've always dreamt about being a, a singer and performing in different places so it's definitely for me it's a dream come true uh, growing up in the Eastern Cape you know in a very like small town and rural um, these things seem so far for, for, for me yeah yeah so it's it's really nice to finally yeah live out my dreams yeah. Sure, that's actually like pretty cool that you actually mentioned the fact that you know being from the villages yeah. and going to the city and like that for you was a big switch up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because a lot of artists also go through that. Yeah. But how did you then use that experience going from the homelands into the city and now yeah. going international to it, like to your advantage with yeah. the songwriting yeah. process? Yeah. How did you make that transition? Sure. Yeah, I guess you know when I was growing up in rural Eastern Cape, I didn't think there was anything beautiful about where I came from. 
but definitely there was a, a lot of love for music and a lot of of playing with music we sang all the time and especially growing up in a community where there's not a lot of instruments like sure i was much older the first time i had seen like a piano or a guitar so definitely i think the advantage of growing up in a rural area is that it makes you very creative because yeah. you have to like find like stones to make cars mm -hmm. so and definitely i think there's a lot of beauty in in traditional south african rural areas especially where i come from there's a lot now that I think about now that I'm old. I was like, wow, that was a really beautiful moment. Yeah. yeah. But then how do you, like, how do you see, like, because now you're talking about creativity and having, like, making something from nothing, you know what I mean? Because yeah. of where we're from. Yeah. But now, isn't there, like, a, a break in communication or, like, a, yeah. a broken telephone when it comes to actually taking Hossa creativity yeah. and now having to globalize it and make yeah. it, inverted commas, commercially viable? Yeah, I don't think so. I think, you know, especially with... Uh, as the whole world, um, when you look at the whole world, people want to know what people do in different countries. I think that's what's interesting. If you go to China, yeah. you want to experience how Chinese live. And I think it's the same with music. People are, are interested in hearing like South African music and almost experience South Africa from, mm -hmm. you know, as, uh, going to Paris to watch a show, a South African artist. I think you get to experience like a feeling yeah. of, of where when artists come from. Yeah. But don't you, um, like, a part of me always felt like, because I've, I've never been overseas, I've never yeah. seen a South African act overseas, yeah. you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I'm, I'm yet to see it, you know, sure, hopefully sure. you'll pack me into yeah, your bag. I'm gonna you know, do it. Humble now. <laughs> but <laughs> I felt like there's a, there's a certain sense of, um, like, mistranslation due to the fact that yeah. uh, you're saying they want to know about you. Yeah. They want to know about what's happening in different yeah. parts of the world. Yeah. But when you are there and you're giving them your true South African self, yeah. are they able to take it in as the art form that you are giving them or to them is it, is it a zoo? Yeah, I wonder, I wonder. I think, um, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, they say to me, uh, you know, I don't understand your language, but your music really touches me and I feel like I understood each word. But you're right, there is... Uh, a gap because you know this music is written mostly for for Tosa people and about yeah. Tosa people and about where I grew up and uh, so yeah there's definitely I think an element of beauty that is missed by not understanding the language and definitely translations can help a bit mm -hmm. but they don't really take out the meaning I, yeah but it's hard you know I listen to a lot of music that I don't well. understand the yeah. language, like Oliver Mtugodzi sure. and Somali at Yosondo. We don't understand the language, but like, I think it doesn't keep us away from connecting and feeling something. Yeah, like, like I, I really felt that with your, like with you, when I was listening to your music, you know what I mean? Because I felt like, because I, I don't really understand his Kosa, yeah. but your, your rhythm and your beats yeah. made me like keep dancing. And sure. like, because yeah. I, I liked the beat, I yeah. was curious about the words, you know what I mean? So I was like, hey, it's like, what's this oak say? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think maybe that's what is happening, but until I go overseas, yeah. you know what I mean? Until you pack me into your bag. I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> until you pack me into your bag, then I'll never know, you know what I mean? <laughs> so now, like, I just want to understand your, your use of language now. When you're, when you're writing a song, and yeah. you know, because you've written like lots and lots of songs, you know yeah. what I mean? When you're writing a song, what, what, what is the process that you go through that says, okay, shot, this, this, this name, this, Zange or yeah, yeah. Kuku yeah. or MB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the word that like explains what I'm right now. Yeah. I mean the creative process is, is, is very different from each song. I think sometimes a song requires different thing. Uh, I do write from my own life. So I tend to spend a lot of time like um, you know, like uh, if I'm gonna write a song about my mother, then I'll spend a lot of time like trying to talk to my mother, listening to our conversations. Um, but each song is different, it, uh, um, especially uh, my background is in theater. So I bring a yeah. lot of that yeah. kind of writing in, in, into, into my writing. But Zange came out because uh, that was the chorus and, yeah. and it's the most repeated word, Zange, Zange, Zange. Zange, Zange yeah. So I thought, let I me mean, name the song Zange. Zange. Yeah. So how did you choose, sorry, I'm how did you fall, choose? Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna fall in love with music yet again in Cape Town, my boy. Don't worry. So, how did you choose the people that you collaborated with on the album? Like, how did you say, okay, that's my game. I'll tell you. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me go span with that. Oh. Yeah, we're not sure. We're still actually in the process of deciding if we're gonna do a collab. Mm -hmm. But definitely, collabs are like uh, people that 
other people that make music that you think you guys are kind of saying the same thing in different ways. So yeah, it's always like somebody I'm definitely a fan of and somebody who inspires me and somebody also who's a little bit different from me. It doesn't make sense I do a collaboration with somebody who's very close to me. It needs to have, um, like I did a song with We Will Worship, which is a gospel group. Yeah. And that song like blew up and like it, and I think that's, that was a powerful collaboration because we come from different worlds and we create something and nah, we bro. introduce each other to each other's fans, so yeah. That was beautiful. Thank you very much for your time, Thank bro. Thank you so much for having me. Ah, Bumil Bunta, Tebo that was Bongi Zue, my band. We'll be back in Pahana Chena. Let's go drink more Vati.